Since the early days of VFX, 3D Studio Max was considered one of the main go-to 3D software that had all the necessary tools and features for VFX artists. And during the late 90s and 2010s especially, it was at its prime I would say, not primarily due to its native tools, but due to the third-party tools created by other companies for different types of simulations, effects, and renders. So how come a popular 3D software such as Max stand out in VFX not because of its own tools, but other tools created by other than Autodesk? And was Max only popular in the field because it had such extra powerful tools and plugins, or were they just a cherry on top? To understand this better, we have to go back a little bit to the origin of 3D Studio Max. The interesting thing is that Max is the only 3D software in Autodesk Roaster that was developed in-house. So in the late 80s, Gary Yost, who is a filmmaker, digital artist, editor, and magazine writer, assembled a group of like-minded computer visual enthusiasts through his various connections, and produced an early 3D software for the DOS operating system known as 3D Studio. The least you can say about the man that he was a legend in computer graphics, because he knows a lot about this field. The early versions of 3D Studio Max were able to do simple tasks of modeling and animation, but the 90s and 2000s were such an amazing period that was full of different new things which happened in the 3D industry. Not only Max was introduced to the world, but also something else was coming. That's right, people started using the software, and as a consequence, they started developing their own tools for it, also known as plugins. This concept was soon embraced by software companies eager to give users additional options and flexibility in their programs. And for the case of Max, plugins gained popularity as users wanted to expand the software's capabilities beyond what Autodesk initially provided. This was a good sign that Autodesk can offer more features and tools, but apparently nothing significant happened since they relied on third-party developers to do the heavy lifting with plugins like Thinking Particles, Fume Effects, Afterburn, Krakatoa, RealFlow, and so on. These plugins help VFX artists to add new functionalities that you can only dream of with Vanilla Max, and as you might expect, people embrace them as part of the software. Talking about VFX, it is no secret that VFX is a profession where you need to be able to juggle between multiple software and use a different number of skills. And this is one of the reasons why people get discouraged from pursuing their passion. But one of the best places to start is Skillshare, which is one of the biggest libraries full of learning classes on the web around a plethora of different subjects like design, illustration, video game design, 3D animation, VFX, and so much more. You can take a look, for example, at this VFX course using 3ds Max by Jake Dunham. And this represents one of the best learning sources for the basics in VFX using Max and After Effects. And throughout this class, you will get your feet wet in concepts like rendering, camera tracking, lighting, and more. So the first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a 30-day free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership where you can pick up different skills like modeling, rendering, simulation, or anything else in between. Now back to the video. Max was really popular in VFX, and it is still to a certain extent, because it was used in hundreds of blockbuster movies in the last 20 or 30 years. But back in the day, for example, a movie like 2012 was not gonna be achieved using Max without using a plugin called Thinking Particles which from what I can see, is the most powerful particle simulation system to ever exist within the software. And I would say, it is the closest thing to using Houdini within Max. The thing is, popular plugins like Thinking Particles, Quakatua, Afterburn, Fume Effects, V-Ray, and so on were created early on, some in the early 2000s and even the 90s which means they were implemented early in the development of a 3D software such as Max. And this has a simple explanation. Max was heavily used in the VFX industry by big studios like ILM, Blur, Scaleline, Pixelmondo, and so on. 
meaning they needed Max to have more tools that can do a quicker job and a better one. So they either make it themselves or they rely on a third party company specialized in high end 3D tool development to do that job. And this is exactly what happened. So basically, the third party developers complemented the development of Max for Autodesk. This is good news, but at the same time, isn't, especially for the average Max users. You see, these plugins cost money. I mean, a lot of money. From few hundred dollars to thousands on average. For example, Thinking Particles costs $900 for a perpetual license, and Chaos Phoenix costs around $390 per year, and Fuma Facts around $365 per year. So if you want to get them all, you will find yourself paying thousands of dollars per year only on licenses of plugins. In comparison to developers of add-ons like Blender for example, the prices are way lower. Because basically paying more than $100 for an add-on is a crime punishable by law. Joking aside, Blender add-ons aren't very expensive, mainly because these Blender tools are used by one-man or two-man shop kind of companies or individual artists and freelancers. The point is, the average Max plugin is kind of expensive for the average 3D artist. But the developers don't seem to have a problem with that because they are selling to studios primarily. So if the main developers of Max, aka Autodesk, make such software available for Max itself, no one will bother to buy these plugins. And no one will bother to make them in the first place. But the reality is, every 3D tool needs plugins and add-ons to fill some gaps in its development. But for the case of Max, I would say it is a little bit extreme. These plugins are still really popular, and VFX artists all around the world still rely on them. And they actually need them because the parent company of Max hasn't filled these gaps yet, as we said. I know, it is hard to do, but progress is kind of necessary to keep the software alive and thriving. Lack of development has been a problem with Max for a long time. I would say especially in the 2010s, till recently, where we are seeing some development and progress when it comes to updates and coming with new tools and features, which is kind of refreshing. One of the biggest examples of lack of updates in the VFX side of things within Max is in the area of particle simulations. Because we have Particle Flow, which is the main system for generating particles in Max. For many years, it was there, but not so many VFX artists or studios used it simply because it lacked many features. Which means VFX artists used other alternatives, such as thinking particles for the longest time. Then later, people started using Tyflow, which is basically a plugin that is considered an improved version of PFlow. So basically one man did the job of a whole company in a nutshell. By the way, if you want to take a look at the video we created about Tyflow, I highly recommend it because it has a lot of good information. So there you have it. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.